bit in Form 1 that uh, I want to take you through so that uh, we, finish, we finish it. And that is the bit of uh, uh, collection of the specimen. Collection of the specimen. Uh, and the comparison between plants and animals. Comparison between plants and animals. If you can recall very well, uh, when we were introducing biology, we said uh, biology is a branch of science that deals with the study of living organisms. Then again, we said that this biology, the term, the way it is, it was derived from two Greek words, that is, the bios and the logos, where bios means life and logos means knowledge. Then apart from that, we also looked at uh, the main branches of biology. We said we have three main branches, that is the botany, the zoology, and the microbiology. Apart from that, we also highlighted some of the minor branches of biology. Minor branches of biology. There are very many, but uh, we listed some few of them, like uh, cytology, which is the study of cell, mycology, which is the study of the fungi, entomology, which is the study of insect, parasitology, which is the study of the parasites. There are several. I've just listed a few to tell you that those are the minor branches of biology. Away from that, we also talked about uh, the importance of studying biology. Under the importance, we said that uh, studying of biology leads into entry into careers such as medicine, uh, agriculture, and many other careers. Then through the study of biology, we acquire some scientific skill, like measuring. Then again, we say through the study of biology, we can be able to understand the developmental stages that occurs in human beings, like how you develop from maybe zygote to embryo and then the baby. And again, we say it, we can be able to solve some of the environmental problems through uh, when we have some skills in biology, biology like uh, uh, pollution, uh, health issues. We can be able to solve that. Then again, uh, we say that uh, through the biology, it enhances international cooperation. People come together, sit down, and uh, debate on various issues that affect the world globally. Again, those were some of just highlighted importance of studying biology. Away from that, we also looked at uh, the characteristic of living organism. If you can remember, uh, biology is the study of living organism. And if it is the study of living organism, then we have to look at the characteristic of this living organism. And we are saying that uh, this characteristic includes gaseous exchange, respiration, nutrition, uh, irritability, movement. You all need to know their definition, as I already said earlier, that they have their definition. For instance, respiration. For instance, gases exchange, the exchange of respiratory gases across respiratory surfaces. Nutrition, the search for nutrients and utilization of those particular nutrients by living organisms are some of the characteristic of living organisms. So today, I want to take you through collection of the specimen. We need to collect the specimen. And before we collect this particular specimen, what are the tools we are going to use to collect the specimen? The first tool that we are going to use is the pitfall trap. Pitfall trap. The pitfall trap is used for collecting small crawling organisms. 
small crawling organ like the millipede. It's a small crawling organism. So we use a pitfall trap to do what? To collect. That is one of the tools that we can use to collect the specimen. Then we have another tool known as the bait trap. We have another tool known as the bait trap. This bait trap is used to attract. It is just an, uh, a mesh, but inside, <coughs> sorry, inside it, there's something called a bait. So a bait will attract that particular animal you want to uh, collect. Then once the animal has been attracted with the bait, then the animal will enter. Upon eating the bait, this end will close and the animal will be trapped. The animal will be trapped. That is the bait trap. Used for trapping and collecting animals. Trapping. It first traps before it collects. It collects. Then we go to another one known as puta. We have the puta. I will dedicate time so that I also tell you part of the puta. It is a very good uh, apparator that we can use to collect specimen, but you need to understand some of its parts before you go and use it. So mainly the function of the puta is for sucking small animals from the back of the tree and rock surfaces. Sucking small animals from back of tree and rock surfaces. Then we have specimen bottle. Specimen Specimen bottle. The specimen bottle is used for storing the collected specimen. Specimen bottle is used for storing the collected specimen. And remember, it must be transparent for easy visibility. What you put in that particular bottle, are you able to see it? Are you able to see it? That is the specimen bottle. Then we have the sweep net. The sweep net for catching small flying insect, for catching small flying insect. Then we have the fish net. Fish net is for catching small uh, uh, water animals, small water animals. Those are some of the apparatus that you can use to collect and once you've collected, remember you're collecting this specimen for observation. You take them to the laboratory and then you observe. Are we in agreement? Yes. yes. So those are the apparatus. I've talked about the putter, the pitfall trap, the bait trap, the specimen bottle, the sweep net, and the fish net. I'm forgetting. We have a pair of forceps. A pair of forceps. This pair of forceps is used for catching or holding dangerous animals like the scorpion. You just not need to uh, hold them or touch them with your bare hands. You need to use a pair of forceps. Are we in agreement? Then apart from that, uh, this one we will talk about in the next lesson, that is classification one, where now we talk about a precaution to take when you are going to collect this specimen. Yes, you have the tools for collecting the specimen. Now, what are the precautions you have to consider? That one is preserved for our next lesson. But the other thing that I want to talk about before I end my lesson is uh, the differences between plants and animals. The differences between plants and animals. As we earlier uh, talked about that plants and animals have a variety of differences. For instance, Plants do not move about in search of water and pasture, but animals move about in search of water and pasture, made about search of water, in search of food, sorry, in search of food, uh, shelter, and maybe mate. You need to uh, move in search of that. But animal, uh, plants do not do that. Then another thing, plants respond slowly to changes within their environment. If you go to animals, they respond very fast or rapidly to changes within their environment. Then again, when we are talking about the comparison between plants and animals, we find that in plants, they have this cellulose cell wall enclosing the content. They have both cell membrane and the 
cell wall. But in animals, their content is only made of uh, the cell membrane. The cell membrane. That one will also be talked deeply when we read cell physiology later. Then we'll be talking about what is the importance of a cell having cell membrane alone or another one having both cell membrane and the cellulose cell wall. So that one is what I wanted to bring into your attention so that uh, you actually understand the apparatus that we use in collection of the specimen and also you know the differences between plants and animals. Have you gained something at least in my presentation? Yes. yes. So let us switch back to...